Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip and today I'm going to be doing a video on my upgraded DIY power well. Now I did a video on this a couple of years ago and if you're watching this on YouTube there's going to be a video floating around here in the top right of the video as you see it to give you an idea of what this had. Um, if you want to go back and watch that, that's up to you. But I've done some improvements, modifications, changes, additions, corrections, and I've done a lot of work to this thing in the last couple of years to really improve its usefulness to me. The first thing I noticed was at the end of camping season last year, I went to use this with my laptop. My laptop draws about two amps of power out of this thing, and the batteries were not keeping up even after they're fully charged. I would plug in my charger for my uh, laptop, fire everything up, and then all of a sudden the screen while I was using it would get dim. And then a few seconds later, it would get bright. And a few seconds later, then it would get dim. And what I found out was happening was these batteries that were in this were so old, they weren't holding a charge. The voltage was dropping down to the point where the charger says, I don't have enough input voltage to maintain 19.5 volts out to the laptop. So the charger would essentially shut off. The laptop would detect that and saying, okay, well, I'm going to go to internal batteries on the laptop, so we need to dim the, the screen to conserve that battery power. Well, that took the load off of these batteries, which allowed the voltage to come back up, and a few seconds later, the charger would say, hey, we got enough voltage now, let's turn back on. The laptop would detect that, bring my screen back up to brightness because now it's using an external power source and the whole vicious cycle would start all over again. So the batteries were simply not holding a charge. And which isn't surprising, I've actually left this on a couple times accidentally for months on end and it ended up draining the battery down to flat. So I'm, you know, I'm partly responsible for those batteries dying. The second reason is they're probably 12, 14 years old. I've had this that long. So the first modification or upgrade I did is I bought new batteries for it. Now what was in there originally was a pair of 12 volt, 12 amp hour batteries. They gave me 24 amp hours total, which did all the things I needed it to do until the batteries died. So when I went to buy new batteries for it, I found out that in the same package, in the same size battery, I was able to get a 15 amp hour battery. So I went ahead and ordered two 15 amp hour batteries. I now have a 30 amp hour power supply here. That was my first modification. Other than that, I'm going to bring the camera in here a little bit closer so you can see precisely what I've got going on here. And we'll get into more of some of the details. So let's bring the camera in. In the original build, I had the circuit breaker, the fuse, the on-off switch, and these two cigarette lighters. And that was my original build. Now, I left everything down here available in case I ever wanted to add something and add to it, I did. I added a 12 volt 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter coaxial output here because I do have a few things that plug into that. I put a couple banana jacks in here so in case I ever wanted to tap into the power and with some alligator clips or something else I have power available that way. I added and I don't know if it'll show up here on the video but I added a volt and amp meter so I can monitor the voltage of the battery as well as the amperage that's coming out of it. I also added another cigarette lighter outlet with a weatherproof cover with a USB charger in it with a couple of USB ports in it that I can plug in and charge things like my cell phone and tablet and things like that. The final thing that I added here on the outside on this side is another switch and a 5.5 by 2.5 coaxial outlet. And this is for charging my Baofeng UV5R radios. They will charge fine on 12 volts, but I'm concerned about doing that long term if it, you know that extra 2 volts is going to damage the charger. So I installed a 10, 12 volt to 10 volt buck converter module inside here. So if I ever want to charge my Baofeng radios, I can just plug directly into here, turn on this switch, and I have 10 volts and one amp available here, which is more than enough amperage to charge the Baofeng radios. Those are the additions I've done on this side. Let's look, take a look inside. Under the hood, 
we have a lot more stuff inside. I've ordered all sorts of cords. I've ordered some extra USB cords. I've got an adapter to go from that DC coax outlet to another cigarette lighter. I've got testers. I've got meters. I bought an, a, a DC adapter so I can have 9, 6, 4.5, and 3 volts. I've got a little 100-watt uh, AC inverter. Just all sorts of stuff sitting in here. In fact, a little bit too much stuff because sometimes it's hard to close the lid. But let's go ahead and take that out, and I'll show you what's really going on underneath here. I do store my Nikon, my not my Nikon, my Nightcore UNK2 charger. This is a charger that I use to charge my uh, Nikon camera batteries with. It just simply plugs into a USB port, which I have over on the side there. I store that in here because this is where I'm going to charge my batteries when I'm on the road. I also still keep my AC adapter in here on the side. That was part of my original build. I have made a rather cobbled together mess here, if I can get it out, a cigarette, light pl cigarette lighter plug to cigarette lighter plug. This way I can char plug into one of these cigarette lighter plugs here and into my vehicle so when I'm driving down the road, I can charge this as I drive down the road. Now, if you're wondering about why this has let go because I pulled it off, if you're wondering why there is a black and a red wire together here and here, that is because this uh, SAE panel mount connector is actually designed to put power out, not accept power in. And I'll get to the reason for that later on. I also have, if I need to, I still have my uh, alligator clips for the charger and the solar panel. I keep those in here as well. This white cord is a just an old strip of LEDs that I had left over from a job. So if I wanted to, I could take and I put it on a piece of metal. So I can take it and I can just mount it to anything metallic. And I'm going to try to reach around and do this blind so I don't... I guess I need an adapter to do this, knock things over. But I do have some adapters that I can adapt these things with. So I can plug this in, turn this on, and I have just some lighting if I ever need to use this for general purpose lighting. I do have that ability to do that. This was all just scrap stuff that I had laying around the house and I just was able to put it together that way. But in the original build, everything here was soldered and I went to these and I'm not really, I would much prefer to have solder because to me it's a, it's a better joint. Because you can see when I opened this up, this connection was, has put and pulled off. But the nice thing about using these crimp on connectors is now I can disassemble everything. I don't have to worry about if a component goes bad, I have to cut the wire and fix it later. Everything is with these crimp connectors. I would electrically prefer the solder, but this is more practical in terms of actual use. The other thing I did was I upgraded the wiring itself. What I had in here originally was purple and yellow, and even though I knew that yellow was the positive and the purple was the negative, when I rebuilt this and bought the new batteries and got all this other stuff in here, it became a nightmare managing all of it to keep track of all of it. So I just went to the store and bought black and red wire. I found some, um, some of that stuff at a garage sale. Some of this smaller stuff over here is from a garage sale. I bought like 25 foot of it for 25 cents. So I've been using that. So that's what's going on underneath the hood here is it's been completely rewired. There is also, and you probably can't see it very well, but there is a terminal strip here that all this is, is terminated on this terminal strip. So if I need to, let's say I have a problem with something here, I can disconnect it there or I can disconnect it over here. For instance, if I have a problem with this cigarette lighter outlet, I can simply pull these uh, quick connect uh, crimp-ons and disconnect that and still be able to use it. Again, I'd like to have it soldered, but this way it at least allows me to be able to disconnect most of this. Some of it is still soldered. Some of the smaller stuff does not have these tabs to be able to slide these quick connects on, 
but they are soldered, but still they're terminated with quick connects on this terminal strip. So if I need to, I can disconnect it and still continue it. Now, if you notice, the fuse is not hooked up. That was my original intent to, is to put the fuse in this and I could easily do that. I could simply come off of here and go to here and just put that in series with the output of this uh, circuit breaker. But when I originally did this, the fuse blew and I have never gotten a replacement fuse. And I've never had any more than, and I've run tests on this, I've never had more than eight or nine amps being pumped out of this thing. So I don't think I'm gonna need a fuse to protect me from an overload. I think the circuit breaker is going to do just fine. And finally, the last thing I wanna show you is this right here. And the last thing I've done on this is over on this side, I have one of these. This is an SAE connection that is panel mounted. This is wired directly into the batteries. The reason for this is, Originally, or actually still, the AC adapter has this SAE connector on it. Just a little two-pin. It looks like just exactly like a four or five-pin trailer connector, but it's only two-pin. This, what I had to do in order to use this was open this up, take the tray out, take these alligator clips, plug them into this connection, Take these, open this up, hook it to the batteries, and then I could plug the charger in. That was a hassle. When I got my 100 watt Lensun folding solar panel, I realized something. I could put the exact same connection on it that this had and put this SAE panel mount connector. So instead of going through this whole thing of hooking either one of these up to these alligator clips, opening this up, taking the tray out, getting to the, the connections here on the battery and clipping onto them. Now, all I have to do is take this and just plug it in and plug this in and I'm charging. Now, to make this a little bit more convenient for the solar panel, the, it can't, the charger came with the uh, Velcro on the back, so I just put a strip of Velcro here on the side I can just slip that right on there, plug my solar panel into it, and plug this right in, and I'm charging without having to open this thing up and deal with these things. Now, you're probably wondering what kind of performance I get out of this pack. 30 amp hours. My needs are very, very simple. I don't run a whole lot of stuff. I need to, at the end of the day, take the camera that I'm using to make this video, as well as my audio recorder, and offload those files onto an external hard drive. So I use a laptop for that. That takes about two amps while that laptop is running to transfer those files to that external hard drive so I can clear the memory cards off of those devices and continue to shoot these videos. I also need to charge the batteries for the camera and the audio recorder. I need to charge those. I need to keep my cell phone charged up. Other than that, I don't have a whole lot of use. Sometimes I'll use it to maybe charge up a flashlight that got left on and the batteries are dead. But other than just using the laptop and charging my cell phone and lap tablet and my camera batteries, I generally don't use this for anything. I don't use it for running a fan. I don't need to use it to run a refrigerator. I don't have a CPAP machine, things like that. So I don't have those heavy loads. I was able to run a static test at home to simulate the use that I would have if I was out on a long-term boondocking trip without power. I was able to go nine full days before I felt uncomfortable putting any more load on this and possibly damaging the batteries. I would let it set overnight, turn it on, and it got down to about, it would, it would be about 11.8 volts. And it took nine days to get down to that point to let the batteries settle down to a, a, a static voltage to where I could determine whether they were charged or not by that little gauge on the site. It took me nine days of every day downloading files, charging my phone, charging a tablet, charging camera batteries. And that's without charging the batteries, either plugging them into shore power or going to this uh, Lensun 100 watt external, or not external, but portable power solar panel. Boy, I can't even talk today. 
even on the days that it's cloudy like this, and I had this thing setting up just in the living room facing my patio door with the curtains pulled open, and it would be basically the light that you see, this thing will still trickle charge this. Won't completely charge it even on a full sunny day, but if I can get that thing out in the sun, and if you want to know how I position this to charge things, watch this video up here. If you're watching this on YouTube, and I'll show you how I use my tripod to position one of these to get the absolute best charge out of it. When this thing was completely discharged, I've run several charge discharge tests on this with the new 30 amp batteries in this, or 30 amp hour batteries in this. I was able to take it down to about 11.6, 11.7 volts and set this out in full sun on my deck and within five or six hours, this thing was fully charged up again. That's how much I like this thing. So I'm gonna be doing a review on this sometime soon, hopefully, so watch for that. So anyway, that's how this performs for me. So those are the changes, modifications, upgrades, whatever you wanna call it, additions that I've made to this uh, DIY power supply. Now, some people are gonna say, you've spent a lot of time and money and effort on this thing where you could easily just have purchased a new one, you know, buy a commercially available one. Yeah, I probably could, but the thing is, is this is built specifically for my needs, what I use one for, what I need one for. It does more than a lot of those can do. Um, and then how many of those commercially available systems have storage space in them? That's my next question is when you buy one of those commercially available ones, can you put all these things in it, all these cores and adapters and, and meters and things like that? Do you have room to put those inside with the battery pack? And the answer is no. So yes, I could spend a little bit more money or even a little less money and buy a more powerful unit, but I don't have a unit that does precisely what I want it to do. I would have to carry around another container full of adapters and, and other stuff just to be able to use the battery pack that's available. So that's why I'm gonna stick with this thing. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share my videos. I'd like to hear from you. This is Backpack Cat coming at you with this trail tip. Be safe out there, and I'll see you out on the trail.